Hey guys, welcome to Made by Pico. I am back again this week as promised to teach you how to recreate those modern drawer pulls I featured in last week's video, my Ikea Tarva dresser makeover. I'll link that right here in case you haven't gotten a chance to check that out. Otherwise, I hope you hung on to the extra knobs from the Ikea Tarva dresser because I'm going to teach you two different ideas for decor pieces that you can create using those guys. So if you're interested, let's get right into it. So first thing, I went to Home Depot to check out what supply they had. I knew I was looking for a black iron style handle, which they did have. Unfortunately, they didn't have the longer version in the multi-pack in black. So I noticed that they did have the longer one in silver, and I knew with a little bit of spray paint, I could make it look the same. To spray paint, I just grabbed my favorite brand, which is Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 paint and primer. This is awesome because it makes your finish more durable and it saves me a lot of time. Now a tip to make this adhere better is if you actually go over the handles with a fine grit sandpaper. This just gives the paint something to adhere to, but I went ahead and skipped over this step because I knew I'd be covering the high contact zones with fabric. In order to get a smooth finish, you want to spray in small spritz until you build up the pigment to get to the desired opacity. You also want to make sure you hold the can at least half a foot away from the handles because if not, paint will accumulate and this can cause paint stains, which we don't want. Alright guys, so I just got back from the thrift store and I found this belt and it's really nice because it has this woven centerpiece and it actually ended up being perfect because I wanted this light cream color. And it actually lines up just nice and snug into that middle piece so that I can have this gorgeous accent handle piece. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to convert this belt piece into handle covers. So to start, we're going to cut the fabric free from the leather piece. Then we're just going to lay the handle over the fabric and wrap it around so that we can see just how much we need to cover it. I then grab a pencil and mark off the line so that I can measure this section. Using my ruler, I can see that that section is approximately five centimeters. So I just went ahead and scored off the remainder of guidelines so I knew where to cut. Now that our guides are in place, we're going to lay down some glue over the edges. This will help prevent fraying when we begin cutting the different sections. For the glue, I will be using the F600 and E600 since I have these lying around, but you could also use a fabric glue. In order to apply this, I used a wooden stick and applied it generously to the ends and where I created the guidelines. Now you won't have to do this step if your fabric fits perfectly in between your handle, but mine was just a little bit too big. So I'm adding some extra glue on the top and bottom. That way I can cut out small divots so that the fabric lays flat on the handle. Once you're done, your fabric should look like this. Now we're ready to start cutting out the different sections. I went ahead and cut a little bit past my guideline because I wanted to make sure this was the right amount of fabric to wrap around the handle. Now we have to create the divots into the fabric. For this, you will need a piece of paper cut to the length and width of your fabric swatch. Now that you have your template, you're just going to wrap it around the base of the handle. Once you get it around, you're going to grab the corners and you're going to crease it with your nail around those areas so that we have a guideline of how big those cutouts should be. Grabbing a pair of scissors, go ahead and cut along the guidelines we just made in order to create those divots. I just went ahead and measured one more time to make sure those divots were where I wanted them to be and then I used this as my template for the fabric. When you go to cut, make sure to leave just a little bit of extra just because the fabric will be thicker than the paper and therefore need a little bit more length to wrap all the way around. Centering the template onto the fabric, I just did the same thing and left a little bit extra and then just cut around the template. I then fit the piece of fabric to the handle to see if it was cut well and I had a little bit of extra overlay so I just went ahead and cut that down. 
Your final piece should look like this where the edges just barely touch. This will create a smooth finish once we glue the fabric onto the handle. Go ahead and cut this out six more times and then we're ready for the next step. Go ahead and spread an even coat of a glue that will adhere well with metal. E600 did a great job. Take your handle and place it in the middle of the fabric and then begin closing the fabric tightly around the handle, making sure to press hard so the glue adheres well. I added a bit of extra glue where the fabric meets in order to create a stronger seal. Then I wrapped it with a hair elastic in order to hold it in place while it dried overnight. If they're dry, all you have left to do is to unravel them and then install them. And then for less than $5 each, you have this gorgeous minimal statement handle. Leftover IKEA Tarva knobs. A strong adhesive you have lying around. Some sandpaper. I used the P80. A hammer. Five slim nails with a small head and the length of approximately an inch or so. And lastly, a small dish. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stacking these on top of each other. So to do this, we really need to make sure that it's really nice and flush around the top. To level out the tops of our knobs, we're just going to use our P80 grit sandpaper. And we're just going to go back and forth across it until we start to shave down enough to make it level. Go ahead and repeat this on all the knobs and then we're ready for the next step. Now that the knobs are level, we're going to need the nails. Now, mine already have the holes in them because the dresser I got was pre-owned. However, if yours don't have it, you can easily make it with a drill. Or you can take a screw and just push it in there because the wood is very porous. So once you have those holes, you're going to take the flat end of the nail and hold it right above the hole and then we're just going to hammer it in. We want this to be a snug fit because this is what's going to be supporting the rest of the knobs. You can stop when half the nail is submerged into the knob. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've put nails inside of all four of these. You don't need to do all five just because obviously there's going to be the one top piece. So what you're gonna do now is I'm actually just going to take them and what I like to do is actually put them on top of each other because then you can see when they line up. And then from there, you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna put a little bit of pressure and it should just slide right in. So I'm just going to slide it in on the table and just like that, it's in. So now to make sure it's nice and perfect and even, you can actually kind of twirl this around a little bit and you'll find that you can push it around to where you need it to be. So. I'm going to go ahead and do this with all of them and then once they're there we can go ahead and separate them and put in a little bit of glue just so that this is really really strong. So I finished putting glue and attaching the knobs. In order to keep it secure while it dries I've just put two heavy bookends on both sides. So you may be asking what's happening with this last knob we have left over and it's actually going to act as a support piece for the small plate. So instead of attaching it the same direction as the previous knobs, we're going to go ahead and invert it and place it on top. The reason for this is this side has more surface area, so when we go to attach the plate, it will adhere better and therefore create a stronger structure. Once those parts were both dry, I just took it outside and gave it a nice even coat with my black spray paint. Once again, you're going to want to use those tips I mentioned before to give it even coverage. As well, I found this was a lot easier by taking one of my wooden kebab sticks I had lying around and stabbing it into the knobs so that I could rotate it to help me spray paint it a lot easier. Another great hack is to actually take your kebab when you're done and stab it into the ground. This will just hold it in place while it dries. Once both parts are done drying, go ahead and attach them like we did with the previous pieces and then your final product should look something like this. For this next decor piece, you need to make sure that you have the kebab stick we used in order to insert into the bottom of the knobs and spray paint evenly. Make sure that you spray paint at least 10 centimeters down where we will be cutting it off. In order to cut it, I just used a pair of wire cutters, but you can also use a pair of scissors. 
Be careful though because this will go flying. Once you have that, just place it to the side and we'll move on to the next step. For this next part, you'll need some air dry clay. To get started, I just laid down a piece of glass, but you can also use wax, paper, or any other surface that's easy to remove the clay. Once you have it open, go ahead and remove a big chunk. I used around three-fourths of the amount that came in my packaging. Next, you'll want to work in your clay. This will help to not only make it more malleable, but also spread the formula so that it works properly. Once you've worked in the clay, we're going to go ahead and flatten it a little bit by putting some even pressure on top. Now that the clay is flat, you're going to need two things that are an even thickness in order to help you roll out the clay to an even level. I just used some old foundation boxes I had lying around. The best way to do this I found was to take the boxes and alternate them in directions while I rolled out the clay. After a few passes, I removed the boxes and started to sculpt the clay into a square shape. Since the clay is malleable, you can just take your hands and easily push the clay into the desired location. Once you're happy with your shape, I just went ahead and went over it one more time with the roller. Make sure to repeat this on the other side so that both of them are nice and smooth. If you see that there's any small cracks, I found the easiest way to get rid of them was just to run your finger over the surface. Now it's time for the fun part. In order to create the texture, we're going to be using our knuckle instead of our finger in order to avoid making any fingerprints in the surface. There isn't really quite a technique to this. All you're going to do is place your knuckle in varied amounts of pressure across the clay. One thing I would like to recommend though is I actually found that they turned out better when I started placing them sporadically rather than lining them up across the side. Once you're happy with how the texture came out, you're going to want to re-squish the sides into a square shape with your hands. Following this, our next step is to smooth out the sides and get rid of any cracks or bumps. We're just going to use that same technique I talked about before where you just take your finger and run it over multiple times to smooth it out. An awesome tip is if you wet your finger with some water and then run it over the edges, this will re-moisten the clay and therefore make it a lot easier to clean up those edges. Now that the edges are smooth, we're going to take our kebab stick and place it into the center of the base. Once you feel the stick is securely in place in the clay, you can go ahead and leave it there overnight as we let the clay dry the necessary 24 hours. So it ended up taking a lot longer to dry than I expected. Instead of taking the 24 hours, it took three days to get to this lighter gray color, which indicates that it's fully dry. Once yours is fully dry, you can go ahead and pop out the stick by just twisting lightly and it should come out really easily. This part's optional, but if you want to get rid of any bumps on the side, I just grabbed a fine grit sandpaper and went over all the bumps that I saw on the top and on the sides. Once you have that all done, you're ready for some paint. Here I use the color Antique White by Duncan. You can go ahead and paint it any color you like, but I do recommend giving it a nice coat of paint because it actually fills in any of those cracks that emerged and hides them really well, giving it a nice clean finish. To get into those divots, I recommend doing circular motions with your paintbrush as this covers all the areas of those grooves and gives an even finish. Once you're done coating the sides and the top of it, go ahead and put it aside to let it dry overnight or until you see that it's fully dry. Now all we have left to do is reassemble it. So you're going to take that top piece and slide it into that hole. You can use some glue, but I found that mine was more than secure without any, so I went ahead and skipped this step. Once it's assembled, you can add some accessories to your table and you have this beautiful decor piece. <laughs> ideas if you do decide to recreate any of them I would love if you tag me at made by Pico otherwise I'd like to know which decor piece was your favorite so comment that down below and if you want to see more videos like this I'd really appreciate if you give this a thumbs up and subscribe because I'll be making new videos every week until then take care you guys